So, good evening and welcome back. It's we are going to get back with the 180 mens. We are approaching the money in in a few of these games. So, our first hour our wasn't that productive, but let's try to let's try to make it better now. So I'm Arni Metsa and this is Pokeramania.com's live stream. And as Marcus Y says that even though he tries to hi hypnotize himself in that how awesome this music is, he just couldn't do it. So this is Incompetex royalty free music and if you know some awesome royalty free music music we can always have something better if I just know that there is something better available. And as I said, that the, the epic songs in there, there are always like a box of chocolate. You never know what you get until you open it. I think that was the philosophy of, of a great thinker, Forrest Gump. In here, King 5 off, like Ace 5 off would have been strong enough to solve there. In here, I think that. We have a bluff catcher here, and I think we beat like the value some only one value hand, but there might be some some complete bluffs on on that board. Like now it's my fault again. And Danita says that we can have Deja sing in the background. You don't know what kind of situation you are putting me here right now, Danita. <coughs> you just don't know. You just don't understand. Or perhaps you do and... Mm, King Jack. Of, I think that this is going to be strong enough to to shove here and my reasoning is that this guy shouldn't have a really strong hand even though we are forced to be all in with this guy his range is going to be really wide because one third of his chips is going to be in in already so we are like playing for a 1000 chip side pot that we are going to get for free and then there's the 1000 chips that we are we are going to get for cheap and Kalyon says the decent spot to bluff catch has strong flush draws could easily semi bluff turn yep that's one reasoning and but also when I'm thinking about it when there are like two queens already on the board on the board on the turn I think that it's going to be it's going to probably be a situation that there are not going to be that many two queen hands it's something that you shouldn't like in these micros you don't make it a habit to bluff catch that much because I don't think that people are going to I don't think that people are going to fold enough or people are going to bluff enough so mostly if you are in a situation that you are going for a bluff catch i generally like to in especially the lower the games are i think that also in those situations 
it's going to be it's going to be better to be a bit cautious and there are also going to be there are going to be pretty good options to utilize your edge later on anyway so so especially if people are putting a high price on their bluffs then i'm going to be even more cautious in here we gone for a min race call and in here we are like when we are three big blinds deep and we are on the UTG, then we are desperate and we are just trying to get it in and trying to... But if we can get some folds, it's going to be awesome. And Kaleon says that players will not be bluff betting much, but they must, might bluff call as easily yeah i think that's also one one adjustment that you pretty much want to do when you are playing smaller games that when you are playing smaller games you when you are playing smaller games you generally you wanna you wanna be also value betting a bit more thinly because people are going to call your bluffs a bit too often as well. So it doesn't make that much sense in most situations to, to bluff that much because people are also calling too much and and and. But it might then make more sense to value bet a bit more thinly than you would because you are also going to get called. And not bluff that often, like if you are having a thin value bet or or go for a showdown value situation. I think in those situations you are you are generally going to be more well off be value betting thinly in micros because you are not going to get bluff raised that often. I'm trying to get the latest stage tournament so that the latest stage tournaments are visible. We are back at 10 tables and I'm wondering that that should we go to towards a bit more extreme multi-tabling. And Marcus why especially the three barrel bluff calls. Yeah, but when people are calling for three barrels you might be bluffed like you are thinking that they must have way better hands than they they really do hmm. we are going to have enough enough equity there we don't like the situation I don't like actually probably with Ace King suited we could have called as well. And in a spot that there are three of a kind on board, I like to be the one doing the betting there because nobody believes you on those kind of boards. Especially if the fourth card is a low card. There are people that are going to have like two over cards, so you are going to get so much value in those spots if you are having a pocket pair or if you have hit the board so those are going to be spots that you want to be fearless in fearless in value betting mm, top right with sit out in big blind i would play any two cards that's a really good point. I didn't notice the sitting out. Here with pocket aces we didn't get a chip lead pot but we are now a top 10 stack and we are approaching the money. I think this is going to be in the in these games it's going to be a spot that and king queen off I think that is going to be strong enough. It's going to be a bit on the edge. And Kaleon, yeah, and pocket threes might be nuts for Villain as he has pull house. Actually, 
like pocket threes actually would be a pretty good hand for our villain. So if you are having a sitting out, like if you are having a sitting out on the big blind, you are basically playing with pretty much the same ranges you would play in. Uh... Oh, I had a table ninja bet here. <laughs> Standard sized opening of 13 and a half big blinds with ace king off. If it works, we can say that it was planned. Ace King suited is going to be a hand that plays pretty well in a multiway pot, so let's just make it multiway. Ace King off, I probably would have would have wanted to shove there with that many limpers and callers, or with that many callers already, because there are so many. Because it's going to be a hand that will have so much weaker weaker equity four way than it's going to be uh, with heads up, up equities it starts to pretty quickly be that there are not a lot of hands that our opponent can three bet there that we are beating because of how the run out is going going to or where the run out is going to because ace queen beats up, ace jack beats up us, queens beats us, jacks beats us. Yeah, jacks beats us. I don't know. We probably would need to give a bit, bit of a credit for our opponent to when he beats us with pocket jacks, and like, like said, it's going to be an impossible hand to play well. We are so close to the bubble, but our hand sucks, and there is the largest stack on the on the game on our right, left side. So let's not be stupid. And Kauris, you shouldn't open 13.5 big blinds because we didn't get any calls or any value for our our ace king, so it wasn't a, it wasn't a good move. And Kaleon said that I was a bit surprised that he continued to bet so small on the river with pocket jacks. Like, when he bluffs, he bets big, and when he has a strong value hand, he starts to starts to bet small. I think that's actually going to be one of the worst leaks that you can have as a player. That, first of all, that telegraphs your hand strength. Second of all, then you are playing a large pot with your bluffs, and when you are having a solid value hand, you are playing small pots with your solid value hands. So, so that's something that <clears throat> and Kaleon says that toe folding would be okay versus shove. If he would have gone for a pot sized bet or a shove, like pot sized bet would have been like 75% of our effective stacks. So I still think that it's going to be. And in here we are hitting our min cash. It's two dollars sixty-six cents. So we are almost making money here. In here actually if if it comes to us folded, because this guy is Sitting out, these guys are nits. I think a shove is going to be pretty good. And I'm unsure if there would be four players or three players behind me, would a shove be plus EV here? But right now it's going to be really good. Mm. 
we want to see the last card for cheap and then our hand hand strength is properly revealed so we are turning ace queen into a bluff i don't think that our actually no we don't t turn a hand as good as ace queen into a bluff in here with ace five i my aim was to like if my opponent limps here he's likely having a weaker hand and he will likely fold a lot of those hands against a shove but that was the first min cash for us today and kauris says that or kaleon says that isn't in 10 big blind bets bets the norm for live play actually now i start to open as many games as i can so let's see if i i can get something like 20 games going going so that we should have at least like one game going to the bitter end during our three hours today uh, i mean raised the tight looking player three bets i think pocket nice is going to be a easy easy fold it's going to be about the weakest hand that i would i would be there with And there's Marcus Y with the getting lucky value. That's going to be such an advanced strategy that we don't have time to explain that one truly. I wonder has, has Corpus rewritten about it on in English? And as Kauris says that min cash is crap and hope you win it, we are already out of that game. So we are like, woo, min cash, and then it's only min cash. <clears throat> mm. There's a sitting out player, such a small bet, so... Actually, that would have been a shove with any two cards, like deuce three off, it would be a shove. Because there are so, so, there is so much dead money in the pot already. Even though I don't like his min bet with uh, eight big blinds at all, I think that in these games people are doing it with with also hands that are not as premium. Like queen jack off is not going to be a premium hand that our opponent traps us with. And Donita says that having a lot of min caches in 180 men is going to be also quite tilting as when it's the same chance of min, min caching and final tabling. Yeah. And I think also the cash that's the next from min caching, it's something like $3.8. I think it's also, it's not worthless, but it's pretty crappy. And you are not going to make money in these games. Like, if I can see a player's like, how many, what's his percentages for every top three position in these 180 men? So I can pretty instantly say from those top top three positions that is this player making money in these games or not, or has he been making money in these games or not? Because 
like as I said that if there are three buses of people that are playing playing a 180 man and the first bus load the first bus loads entrance fees are all given to the winner I think that for the three top players one half of the prize pool is getting or more than one half of the prize pool is dealt out to the top three players and when there is like like here we can see that top two players are taking half of the prize pool so one and a half buses are gone so basically when the third player takes his share of the prize pool actually i think third and fourth then there are like two buses gone already and that's like the four first finishes and the last third of the prize pools are divided for the rest of the money finishes which are 23 different spots so they don't have that much in here i don't think this guy has a strong range and i think my pocket nines is going to be ahead of these both guys ranges so Oh well. I still keep my judgment that I think that I'm still ahead of both of those guys ranges. Now I'm starting to feel the pressure a bit that it wouldn't hurt to win a flip or two to a round. And I, I know that I have won my share of flips but today, but it's always if you are not winning those winning those late game flips, it's going to be it's going to be harder for your for your mental game as well. And for Kaleon, in these games it's going to be quite insane if you are having an aggressive chip leader. Especially since there are plenty of players that are not having like any idea what ICM is in 180 mans. So you can't like utilize the same ICM pressure against the 180 man reg than you could utilize against uh, something like a 9 max reg. Because the 180 man reg, there, there actually might be 180 man regs that don't know anything about ICM and they're just going for the for the first positions. Like I think that knowing ICM is going to be an advantage, but you are making less mistakes if you are just going for chips and going for number one all of the time in these games than any other sit and goes. Uh, King eight suited about six big blinds. I think it's going to be it's going to be profitable. It's on the edge though. And ace king suited. I can't see a way that we would fold this. Sorry, I'm lucky. You are having such a short stack, and there are so many, so much money in the antes already. So let's just get the chips in and hope to hope to be lucky. And now that we are having about 15 tables running, you can see that it starts to be harder to discuss about hands. In here I overbet shove the river because I think I will get called with even something like jack suited. And no Galeon, don't 
don't fabricate the situation that <laughs> that I know that I would need to fold in. I think in this this situation that these guys are going to look tight enough to to be shoving pretty wide from from the button, even though it certainly isn't a Nash shove. But sometimes it doesn't need to be a Nash shove to be a profitable shove. I think like if there is five players all in before my action, then I would need to fold, even with like six big blinds deep and ace king suited. But in general, I don't think that there are that many those situations. Although I must say that I have had a insane situation in the six max hyper satellites that I had pre-calculated that if I'm having pocket aces and there are five people already all in on the first hand and I'm in the big blind with pocket aces, should I fold? And the answer is that yeah, I should fold because there's going to be a greater chance to get in the money by folding the pocket aces than calling with those. So I have been once in that situation, so it's going to be good that you have pre-calculated stuff. And when you need to fold aces, you need to fold anything. Let's get more tables. Average stack size is going to be so low that that's going to be a profitable shove, in my opinion. Even though the big blind is the most likely to call and he's having the largest stack, I still think it's going to be it's going to be good. Delano. Actually, actually, I'm not sure that did I calculate it before or after. I'd like to remember that I folded. But those are like, those are insane situations and they are happening really, really, really rare. Like, really, really, really. And also something like five players all in before your action. It's going to be something that happens really, really, really rarely. In here with one sitting out, if this guy wouldn't be... Actually, I think still a min race would be... Would be good. Yeah, like the situations WTF. I bet three barrels with pocket aces and my opponent called me with ace jack or ace jack suited without no flush draw all the way to the end so he had he had an ace high on the river and he called three barrels and preflop well i'm thanking him for chips And there is the Kauris tactic, shove all in and then just register to the next tournament at the same time because you are, you are going to lose your all in anyway. That's actually something that I'll need to try at some point. And Delano, I have actually, I think I have folded aces twice on a live stream, so... 
I think I have calculated those out also on our English side. I think there has been twice a situation that I need to fold aces. And Kaleon says that has folded pocket kings a few times. I think there are a lot of more situations, especially if you are playing 18 player sit and goes, that you need to fold pocket kings. I think it's going to be even quite regular. Like actually those are going to be the last games that I'm registering into. So when all the games are started that I have registered into, then I'm having about 20 tables running. In here I think that queen 10 off is going to be solid enough. And this guy is not going to call me wide enough here. Yeah, if you are having an early game, then you shouldn't fold pocket kings that often. But in late game, it's going to be it's going to be a bit different, and there will be late game situations that you'll need to fold kings and aces. But I think in something like six max sit and goes, there are going to be so few situations where you need to fold even. That you'll even need to fold. Fold something like pocket kings. With knights with there when there are more ICM situations and also with 18 players where the ICM situations are more extreme. Then it's going to be a, then it's going to be a bit different. Like early game, I think that, like in early game, if opponent accidentally exposes aces, then it's going to be good to fold, good to fold kings. On a public-private coaching on the Finnish side, there was a immortal quote from from the from Jones that. He got such a good price that he could even call while while drawing dead. That's that's something that if you are getting a good enough price and you are seeing your opponent have aces, then you don't fold even pocket kings. And Danita said that some problems with my audio. Okay. What kind of a problems? Is there extra sounds? Is there something like... Is my sound breaking up and... Or if I'm going like in pieces... In here with pocket aces, we are going to go for an exploitative line and go for a small four bet. And since okay now was lagging a bit, but video was fine. With pocket aces, even when our opponent five bets, we are going to six bet it all in. Like six betting late game in, in a sit and go. What the hell are we doing? I think that's going to be a chip lead pot though. And I hope I win it with aces.
Mm. In here, as I said, with pocket queens, there are not a lot of situations that we want to fold pre-flop. I don't think that's one of those. And we fold, we win with aces. Against pocket sixes. That's a standard hand to five bet. Small. I don't know what my opponents are doing, but I'm loving it. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that Kalyan, you blogged about that hand, or it was in a hand analysis forums or something. I remember that was an awesome hand. But that's something that you are, you are probably feeling quite awesome if you are just like losing that what you put in preflop when you are having aces versus kings, because it's so often it's going to be a hand that you. You'd get your money in. That's like the special play of a special play. I don't think that ace four off is going to be strong enough to go for something like 15 big blinds. But I think that if I'm hitting the ace there, then I'm going to have a solid enough situation to own the guy that did 5-bet me with, with pocket sixes. So right now you can see what it requires to play 20 tables. Right now we are having 20 tables running. Mm. Race and three bet with that kind of a flop, even with the with two pairs and and a top kicker, I think that it's going to be most profitable just to leave it alone. And Delano NL says, "Welcome to the micros." Yeah, welcome to the micros, and I'm already loving it. I'm loving when my opponents are giving me easy spots to exploit them. Mm, nine eight off. Not strong enough. If if I would have had something like four and a half big blinds, I think I would have to need to shove that one as well. And still adding some more tables. Now we are at 21 running tables. And Kaleon, those are like awesome that that when villains are trying to shout at you when you are either losing less than you should or you are like calling down their, some of their bluffs that's like if you are thinking in ranges might be quite self-evident bluff. So But that's a good point, that's a good point. And I think that's something that usually also separates the good players from mediocre players is that the good players are thinking about how what I'm doing will affect my opponent's range and what's the optimal situation and when I'm going to, or how I'm going to get to the optimal situation. Like, 
in the Caleon's hand that if he's having pocket kings and if he's playing in a way that makes hands that he's beating are folding, that's not going to be a good situation for him. Rather to keep the opponent's range wide and and to try to get him later on in the hand. Now I'm already afraid of the YouTube video when I'm when I'm asked about hands that are just like they flash there for for two seconds and like the more tables you are playing then you'll need to also have a he requires only an jack there. I don't think that he has it often enough. The king four, it's it's a crappy situation. Like every king is worth the same, same at that spot. Uh, did you raise fold that king queen suited? About twenty big blinds deep. Yeah, I did. In here, I'm actually trying to go for a bit of an interesting play on the top right. I'm trying to get, like, there are plenty of players that are completely unknown to me. So, in here, I think that his range will be so much of hands he doesn't want to play that I think it's going to be okay to call that one with pocket sixes and that's like he's going to probably play with, with a smaller range smaller race hands that he that are going to be very strong so so in a way even though it might not be a uh, in here we are going to get it <laughs> get it in i love it we are getting money in and then when I'm seeing my opponent's hands, I'm loving it time after time again. Yeah, in these situations when we are having such a large amount of tables, it's going to be... It's going to be harder like... And what's it all about when you are multi-tabling this much is... It's going to be about... It's going to be about getting the idea pretty quickly and also staying calm no matter the situation. And of course we are not going through all of these hands. I'm trying to explain some of the more interesting hands. But usually with 20 tables I need to be clicking that much so I don't have that much time to... So this is going to be a bit of, an, bit of a multi-tabling show at the same time. As Donita asked. That's the perks of a smaller community, even though your voice can be heard. Uh, 20,000 chips, min race from UTG. I think his range in general will be, will be too strong for my ace and suited. I don't like that that much though. And I'm hoping that we are getting getting to the to the final tables with at least one table tonight. In here actually asking of I don't think that we are going to get too many good things happening if we are if we are shoving so mm.
and with the ace queen off when there's going to be a race and a re-race from uh, nitty opponents i think that it's going to be it's going to be better for me to fold ace queen off pre-flop and Kaleon, like normally I don't like doing more than, more than four tables. I think that four tables is going to be pretty much the optimum because then you can concentrate on, on the situations and and then there is space to go through the go through some of the more interesting hands pretty quickly. And Kaleon asked that did Kuberis PLO summer camp start already? I don't know, I think that he had problem finding players for the summer camp. But I think that this would be about the times that it, at least the time to get yourself in the camp is already gone. I mean raised, he called. I think even against a sizable bet that if we are not if if he donks I think that still that we with the ace twos off we are going to have a strong enough showdown value. In here, with top pair, good kicker, there are so many draws open and there is so much dead money in the pot. But unfortunately we are against the pretty much the worst, worst possible scenario for us. And Kaleon says that in the ace queen spot it's mostly about what we think about the villain with the with the small bet with his micro stack i don't actually think that it's mostly about the villain with the short stack it's partly about the villain with the short stack that we don't get the villain with the short stack to give up with when he put more than half of his money already in the pot i'm thinking that his range is generally it's going to be tighter and it's going to be more value oriented uh larger stack against second larger stack 43 players remaining and we are getting the pocket jacks and the larger stack raises it's going to be quite an insane situation asian chip wise if he shoves i'm going to call but i don't like it Mm. Queen ten off. And in these games you'll start to notice that the late games are going to usually be quite easy. That even if you are having a large stack, it might be that there is like no opponent with a large enough stack. And Kaleon said that we are way ahead of original arrangements and stack were not that deep. So if we think that small stack is not trap heavy with his silly three bets size, then it will be easy I show shove. I don't think that we are way ahead of a nitty looking opponent's range there. I think a nitty looking opponent there in the cutoff will be, of course we are ahead of his range, but I don't think that we are way ahead of his range. And then there is like, if we shove, we are folding the... In here I think that when guy is that active, and even though we are close to the bubble, we are not going to just get the money. We are trying to... We are trying to get... We are trying to get the best possible equity situation there, and... I hope that the best possible equity situation, like we got our money in well, but we 
we didn't run good enough. And like in this situation, it's it's a, it's like it's going to be a it's going to be a multi-tabling demonstration. Like what you are going to do, because these are one of the I think MTTs are the easiest game to multi-table. So this is going to be, in a way, it's going to be the easiest game to multi-table. And also, I think that these are going to be these are going to be games that we need to hit certain volume that we can we can know that we can get the late game as well. Nasty situations with the active chips. Uh, not chip leader, but I think I we are second in chips and he's probably third in chips. So it's going to create some nasty situation, but we shouldn't be that afraid. We are playing in position most of the time. And this is going to be like, I don't believe you kind of a race. That I don't believe that he hits anything there and... I think this is going to be enough to discourage our opponent to carry on against against us. And Kaleon says that good strategy would be to not not lose flips close to the final table. Yeah, that's that's part of the good winning strategy that we haven't gotten through yet. And Leubas, could you explain what the turny adjusted big blinds mean? I thought it means how many big blinds do you have, but my calculations are disagreeing with your HUD. You are correct that your calculations are disagreeing with your HUD. So I'm trying to think that should we go through it right now or should we go through it later? Let's go through it right now. So in this game, like there is 300 and 600 and anti is 50 chips. And there are nine players on the table. So turny adjusted big blinds are calculating the weight of the antes. So like, like in the way that small blind will be one third of the ante uh, or the blinds and big blind will be two third of the blinds. So in turny adjusted big blinds, we are calculating two thirds of the antes into the big blind. So in here, the turny adjusted big blind would be 600 plus 450 times two thirds. So it would be 900 chips. So in here, we, we are having 21.9 turny adjusted big blinds, which, which would be about 19,800 chips and it calculates uh, our stack size before before we put antes in so I think it's I think it works and Danita has responded with quite an excellent answer as well so uh, pocket tree is going to be strong enough with all the dead money in the pot. With all of these small stacks around, we are going to go for we are going to go into the bulldozer mode. So in here we are just trying to trying to bully our way through to the final table. And FML getting called with a skin suited and pocket tens. Probably not not a lot of worse options that we can get called. One more break, Kauris, you are correct. One more break. Is that the last hand we are having? Yeah. So we are having a break and we are getting back 
getting back in five minutes.